Hi there. Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I think we're episode 195. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. So as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. Hi Karen and Karen, Diane, Kathleen, it's Paper Pixie time. Hi Terry, Joanne. I'm just about a minute or two late, so I'm here. Hi, Gail, Patty, Linda, Tracy, Patsy, Nancy, welcome. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Tony, Cheryl. You guys are rolling in too fast for me. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Pam, Tammy, Penny, Laura. Welcome. So today, let's see. Today was officially, I'm now on vacation from the day job for the next 11 days. <laughs> So my company that I work for gave us a five day weekend for Memorial Day. The kids are going to start going to summer camp on a Tuesday for the first time in like a year. <laughs> and I decided to take next week off of the day job to enjoy the peace and quiet. So I'm kind of on a high right now because it's just starting to hit me that I'm on vacation from work. But I'm not taking a vacation from the paper pixie. You will see <laughs> projects for me and I'll still be doing that stuff because that stuff's a lot of fun. So welcome to tonight. I am going to be doing three fancy fold cards using the well suited suite. I keep wanting to say the well suited suite, the well suited suite. Um, I know that Father's Day is coming up on June 20th. So I've got two Father's Day cards and a birthday card. All three are masculine and interchangeable. You could turn them into birthday cards as well. And I want you to stay on until the end because we're going to do Prize Patrol a little bit differently tonight. I'm going to choose winners from those of you watching live. I've got a new giveaway tool um, offered through the streaming software that I use, which is called StreamYard. So I'm going to pick winners live. You'll get to find out live if you win. So stay on until the end if you can. I will not be choosing winners this week from those watching the replay. So a little perk to those who are watching live. All right, let's see. A couple of housekeeping items. We've got less than a week left of the Join Plus promotion, which is the starter kit promotion where you get to choose up to $155 in product, so product of your choice, and only pay $99 for that. What comes with the starter kit are so many perks and benefits to being a demonstrator, whether you are just a happy shopper all the way up to a business builder and everywhere in between. I would love to have you join my team of paper pixies. And during a starter kit promotion is really the best time to join because you get so much more for your buck. And that ends um, 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time Monday evening. So that's Memorial Day. That is the last day to take advantage of that starter kit. Uh, to join, you just simply go to thepaperpixie.com slash join, and you can go through the starter kit process there. If you're interested in checking out my top 10 list of um, all, my top 10 reasons why I think purchasing the starter kit is the best decision ever, you can go and visit thepaperpixie.com slash top 10 and you can check those things out. Am I forgetting anything? Is it both Facebook and YouTube for the... Yes, it'll be, it'll be anybody watching live and you should be able to leave the um, hashtag prize patrol comment. But yes, that will be available to anybody watching live on either Facebook or YouTube. We're going to test it and see how it goes tonight. We got to try it, right? Um, let's see. There's also a connect craft and collect promotion, which is extra stamp and rewards on orders of $250 or more. So if you have a huge wish list, you can get an extra 25 on top of the stamp and rewards that you'll already earn. So if you placed a $250 order, instead of just getting 25 in stamp and rewards, you're going to get $50 in stamp and rewards. So that's pretty darn cool. And if you don't already have a demonstrator or you haven't shopped with me in a while and you need copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And this month's host code is GN4QUUTJ. This host code will end on orders through May 31st. Um, if you place an order of $50 or more, you get to choose a free gift. One of the, these three options, the medium basic white envelopes, the Highland Heather Grow Grain Ribbon, or the Genial Gems. 
So you get to pick that. And let's see, I'm out of breath because I'm like so excited to be on vacation, y'all. <laughs> and I'm really excited for the kids to, we now officially have a third grader and a kindergartner, which is insane. Got the official acceptance for Nolan into kindergarten for public school. So <laughs> it's now official, which is crazy to me. So you got a question for me? My husband, Brian, is here. Um, the extra $25 stamp rewards, great question, Carla. That is through June 14th. So you get a little bit of extra time with that promotion. Um, Brian is watching for your questions. So he'll pop them up on the screen during the live. That helps me kind of focus to what I'm doing. I'm going to take a quick sip of water. We had red beans and rice for dinner and it was salty, <laughs> but delicious. All right, so let me flip the camera. I'm going to show you the suite in the mini catalog. I believe that this bundle is carrying over. The paper is not carrying over. So let me switch to that. Okay. So this is on page 66 and 67 of the current mini catalog. The mini catalog is going to be retiring on June 30th. Coming up on June 1st is going to be the last chance products promotion. So there will be some products that are on sale because this um, bundle, the handsomely suited bundle is carrying over. It will not be on sale, um, but make sure you check out. I'll put some information out on my website, thepaperpixie.com, probably in the next few days to give you a heads up of what's coming and what's for sale. The extra $25 reward, Mary, is to get an order up to $250 and then... Um, you'll get first the $25, which is the 10%, and then an additional 25 on top of that. That will just automatically happen in your order once your order reaches $250, okay? So the well-suited suite, I love this suite because perfect, obviously, for masculine cards, for Father's Day, birthday, etc. I'm gonna show you the stamp set. We're gonna use a few of the elements here on tonight's three cards. I've got a handful of the dies are out right now, but you've got some really cool dies for doing um, dress shirts, buttons, suspenders, tie, bow ties, all kinds of fun stuff. So that's exciting. This would be a really cool element to make for the centerpiece on a button down shirt and you get six buttons in that one die there. So I know I'm giving you a glare here. Great set of dies. So handsomely suited, if you haven't done your Father's Day cards or you need some masculine birthday cards, this is the suite for you, okay? So that is well suited. Again, page 66 and 67. We're going to jump right in to the first card. I don't have anything to share from the kids this week. It's been a little bit chaotic. We had popcorn for breakfast this morning because the kids... She does that drawing if you want to show that. Which one is that? Uh, unicorn ice cream. Oh, I don't know where that drawing is. <laughs> That's right. We'll show it next week. Um, <laughs> so they wa they were supposed. Lily was supposed to watch Raya and the Last Dragon, but the teacher couldn't get the movie to go. So they, Nolan and Lily, had bowls of popcorn at about what eight fifteen this morning and watched the Sid the Science Kid movie. So <laughs> it's kind of early to be having popcorn but if you talk to papa pixie my dad who's probably tuned in right now he'll tell you it's never too early for popcorn it's his favorite treat or favorite snack all right we're going to be using the now i don't remember the name of the paper i think it's well suited or handsomely well suited designer series paper <laughs> and we're using my favorite pattern with this floral background love the colors in this suite and I've got a piece of designer series paper that measures six inches by 12 inches. I want to give a shout out to fellow friend and demonstrator Jennifer Hill. As part of being an incentive trip achiever, we had a share fair and Jennifer shared the most adorable pocket card project. So I'm using that for inspiration. And I've got a couple of different things that we can do with the leftovers of the paper. I don't like to waste paper if I don't have to. So. We are going to start with, again, 6 by 12 designer series paper. And we're going to score this. I'm hoping my brain works tonight. I didn't write any measurements down. I'm using my mathematical brain to hope that I remember everything. So on the long side, we're going to score this at 4 inches. And I like to just rotate at 180 and do 4 inches again. 
Not that the paper's cut weird, but you can either do four and eight or four, rotate and four. And then I'm gonna turn to the short side, the six inch side, and I'm gonna do a score line at half of an inch, okay? I'm gonna bring in the paper trimmer for this next step. I do have a quick template to help you for reference. This is obviously not to scale, but imagine that this is 12 inches long by six. We did our four inch and our eight inch score line and then that half inch when we turned it that way. So we're gonna remove the two half inch by four inch sections on the outside here, and then we're gonna come in and do some diagonal cuts. The paper trimmer is perfect for this. If you don't have this paper trimmer and you uh, if you don't already have a paper trimmer in your stash, I highly recommend the Stampin' Up! one. It's $25. It's got just a lot of really cool benefits, but I use it almost, well, I really do use it all the time. So um, one of the things that I love is if we've got the measurements along this um, channel here, the cutting channel, so that will help me do some of these cuts. So our half inch score line, I've got it to the right side, or you can also... Um, line the left side up to five and a half and we're gonna cut but we're gonna cut only down to the four inch mark now you're gonna probably have a hard time seeing that on the camera but four inches is right above my thumb there and I'm gonna come and cut but stop right there at four inches if I can see that then I'm gonna lift up the channel I'm gonna come down to eight inches you can also cut these sections with your scissors and cut so then we're gonna have something that looks like this. Okay, we got those pieces cut. It's quick and easy with the paper trimmer and I need to change my blade because it's getting dull. <laughs> so I'm gonna then just come in and just slightly notch to finish removing those sections. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll get rid of those. You could certainly, you know, trim them so where it's four inch by half inch, and you can use that as an accent piece on a project. All right, so now the next thing, and this you wanna be real careful that you're cutting it in the right direction. So feel free to reference the template here. We're gonna cut from this score line down on the diagonal to this corner here. So the best way to do that is, I like to line up at least one of the starting points in the channel, and then I place my finger there and then I can pivot the rest of it. So you wanna line up wherever that score line is, and I'm blinded by the light. <laughs> so I've got the score line that we did, that four inch score line, and then I can just cut this on the diagonal. Now save this piece, we're gonna repurpose this. We're gonna to have to do a little bit of trimming and things, but I will show you that in a minute. We're gonna repeat the same thing on this side. Again, line up that corner, then we can pivot. I'm looking for my four inch score line. That looks right, and then cut. So we have this weird looking like spaceship or something. <laughs> a manta ray, I don't know, it looks like a funny shape. Okay, now we can fold and burnish on those score lines. cannot believe it is the end of May. That's insane. All right, so that little half inch piece is gonna be the piece that we glue the bottom of these flaps to so that there's no problem with our card inside slipping in there. How cool is that? So, and I just realized I'm gonna have to go grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine. <laughs> All right, so there's a couple ways you can do this. I'm just gonna use tear and tape here and I'm gonna run it just right along the bottom edge of each of these triangle pieces. And I almost always have my take your pick tool handy that comes in really handy to pull that backing off. And then we're just gonna do one side at a time, just fold that over and it's gonna attach that little half inch strip like so. So by doing that, we now have this pocket that we can slip our card into, okay? 
How fun is that? Now, if you didn't like that these were separated here, you could stick a little glue dot or a little bit of liquid glue. That doesn't bother me because it won't really get in the way. Um, and then I've got two pieces of cardstock here. I've got Knight of Navy and I knew I needed my ruler, which I cannot find it. Here it is. All right, just to make sure I get these measurements right. So we've got three and seven eighths by five and three eighths for the Knight of Navy, which then means that this is three and five eighths by five and one eighth. So those pieces are just going to layer over each other with an eighth of an inch. And I'm debating just in case I make a mistake with my stamping because <laughs> it'll happen. Let me go grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine. I'm using a bit of contraband, don't tell on me. I've got my magnetic platform <laughs> that I typically use behind the scenes, but I am going to first do some quick stamping off here to the side now that I've made a big mess of my space. We're gonna use Knight of Navy ink, and I've got the adorable polka dotted bow tie. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that onto basic white. I'm gonna let that dry for a second because I am actually gonna come in with the Balmy Blue Dark Stampin' Blend and color that in, but I, it's not typically ink that you would use with alcohol markers, but as long as you work quickly, it works. And then, while I've got the ink pad out, this is our base, let me get this out of the way. Let's do, we're gonna stamp with the sentiment have a happy Father's Day, handsome, but I don't want handsome to be on the card. So I'm gonna mask it, and I'm gonna use post-it tape, but you could use scotch tape as well. I did just link this. I had um, a fan of mine call me this past weekend asking me where I found this, so I linked to it on my favorites page. But I'm just gonna use that to mask off the word handsome. That would really be the only card I would stamp that on is for my husband. <laughs> but not for anybody else really. Um, so I'm gonna then stamp or ink that up. Let's just hope that I get this inked up well. Now that is a mess. Make sure you remove it because we don't want that to get anywhere. And I'm gonna stamp that towards the bottom of my basic white card panel. And we're just gonna go with it even if I'm crooked. Yay! So there's that in the bottom. Now I'm gonna come in with my Balmy Blue. I'm gonna use the brush tip. And I'm just gonna come in real, Balmy Blue is not one of the coordinating colors, but this goes really well with the DSP. So if you move quickly, then your Knight of Navy ink doesn't bleed. And you do not have to be perfect here. That's one of the things I love about the blends is they're just so easy to not make a mistake because they just blend so very well. So there's that. Now let's come in with a couple of things with the stamp and cut and emboss machine. Let's see if I can get this all. Now there are, it's hard to tell, but there's two different sides of the bow tie that you just have to make sure this like upper right corner is a little bit pointier than the other ones, or at least I think that's the case. But I'm gonna go ahead and line that up, cut that one out. We're also gonna do this collar piece. I'm just gonna cut that out of basic white. And then I've got a scrap of Knight of Navy. We'll just stick that there and we're gonna do a pocket. And one fell swoop. Hopefully I didn't just move my bow tie. And I totally just did. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, duh. That's a great idea, Judy. Cute little hair bow. Yeah. So I love the polka dots on there. All right. So we've got our collar, our bow tie, and our little Knight of Navy pocket. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take liquid glue. And this just gives a little subtle difference here with the collar. Be real careful because this is only connected just slightly. It does give you options though if you wanted to separate these pieces. That makes it really easy. So I'm just going to take the liquid glue and center that along from left to right and then press that all the way up to the top of the basic white layer. Mary, that is a good question. I use my plates until they break, to be honest, and I actually haven't had a plate break on me. So I've got a few plates that I kind of put into rotation. I'm just adding dimensionals here. Um, but I would use them literally until either they've curved so much I can't do anything with them, which kind of happened with my mini plates that some of you may have remembered from a week or two ago. Um, but yeah, I actually haven't, I've, I've bought new ones, but I just kind of keep them in rotation, but I would use them until they break. So I've got the bow tie. We're just going to put right here. You can just slightly see that cute collar with the bow tie. Now we're going to glue this to the Knight of Navy base. And then this card is almost done. Just need to adhere the little pocket. Went a little wonky with the glue there. I, I will post those to my blog. So I what I will do is sort of maximize posts to my blog. So I'll have one card that posts tomorrow, another card that will post on Friday. So I'll do this one for tomorrow. How's that? With a picture of the template, all the dimensions, so you don't have to worry about writing them down. And then, um, so, and then I think the next one will post either Monday or Tuesday. I haven't figured out if I'm going to take the day off Monday from a blog post. Um, but yes, I, I, they will be on my blog at thepaperpixie.com. All right, so this is the card base that you can then write your little sentiment and that will slip right into our pocket. And then the finishing touch. I have not used the boiling water method, Deborah. And that could be because I have, I don't know, I have quite a few. <laughs> One plate to not cut to keep it pristine. Great suggestion. And then we'll just put this little pocket right here. This kind of reminded me of like a fancy bathrobe. Norlene, that is a great question. I do not know what the method actually entails. So whoever suggested it, maybe you can give a, some additional details for Norlene. All right, so that is card number one. We've got our designer series paper pocket card. So real quick recap. We've got six by 12. We scored at four and eight and half inch on the short side. Okay, we removed these two half inch by four inch sections and then cut these pieces on an angle. We are saving these pieces for a future card. Then we've got the card base, which I got, can never remember this. Let's see, three and seven eighths by five and three eighths with Knight of Navy. Basic white is three and five eighths. And again, these measurements will all be on the blog tomorrow by five and one eighth. So yay, there's the first one. I'll bring it back and show you at the end with the other two cards. Project number one, I need this stamp set again and that one. Okay, project number two, let's go ahead and use our diagonal pieces, but we're gonna use the opposite side the basic gray side. Now, we cut these from a four inch by five and a half inch piece, but I actually need these to be four inches by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna take the long flat edge, trim it to five and a quarter. Whoops, that would be the scoring blade. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one while we've got it. Take that long flat edge, 
Now this is just conserving paper. If you wanted to just make this card without doing the D designer series paper pocket fold card that we just made, you would just want to cut, you technically will want two pieces that are four by five and a quarter, and you're going to cut them on the diagonal from corner to corner. Right now we're trying to get this diagonal right for the layer that we need it for. So I've cut, you kind of see that flat edge. Now we need to kind of fix this angle. Okay, again, we're only gonna be wasting just a little sliver of paper, but I wanna go from this corner to that corner, and we're gonna basically just be shaving off a tiny little bit. And I'll show you once we cut it. I like to start from the edge that we're removing the most from. And we are just this weird little sliver. But you'll notice when we put the card base together why we had to do that, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Let's line up the corner. I'm out of screen here. The corner to corner. Again, we're just trying to fix that angle to make sure that we've got a diagonal piece that is four along the bottom and five, five and a quarter along the side. And then that diagonal goes from corner to corner. So again, kind of a weird sliver that we just cut off but you'll understand why. We're trying to maximize our paper here. I kind of like not showing you the cards yet. We're gonna do this and then I'll show you. <laughs> All right, I've got a piece of basic gray, eight and a half by 11, just a full sheet of cardstock. I'm gonna come in and we're gonna score this right down the center of both sides. So four and a quarter, that's halfway between eight and a half, then turn it the long way and five and a half. I'm gonna leave the paper trimmer out. This template's gonna look real funky, but I love the way that the end result is. Now, before you say that I'm wasting cardstock, cardstock is cheap. So we can save the pieces we're cutting away for a whole other project if we're punching out shapes but wait until you see how this card goes together. So I am going to, I'm using this template as a guide because I was having a hard time remembering which way. This side of your paper is the side that you scored on. So we want to remove this upper left quarter. Okay, we're gonna remove that first, then we can save that for a panel. So I'm gonna line it up at four and a quarter. And same thing, we've got the paper trimmer that lets us do this, we're gonna cut down to five and a half. Okay, so I've basically just saved myself from having to cut that with a pair of scissors. And then I can turn it sideways, line it up at five and a half. But then we're gonna cut from four and a quarter down. So we remove this panel, save it for another card layer, okay? Wouldn't it be easier to cut a quarter from the flat? Oh, with the... I'm not sure what you're asking, Ananda. Part of why I had to do it that way is because we started with a quarter. Um, oh, I see, do I? You could have done that, that's right. I think what you're saying is, on this piece, cutting that would have been a little bit tricky because the problem is we're cutting this triangle piece away. I think I don't, I, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> I think I know what you're saying, but it's going to take me a little bit to process Ananda. So I will respond back to you, but I think you might be right. Um, all right. So we've got this angle. I'm going to reference the template to make sure that I don't cut this right or they don't cut this wrong. I'm going to cut from the score line on a diagonal up to this corner. So again, using the cutting guide or groove, I'm lining up score line to corner. Again, here's a big diagonal piece you can save in your scraps. Then I'm going to cut score line to corner. It's gonna look really weird and like we're doing this wrong. And actually, 
let's get that out of the way so it's not quite as difficult to picture. So we're going to go from here down to the corner and again save this piece. So then what you end up with is this really funky looking <laughs> piece, okay? But this will be on reference. This will be, let's do this for Friday's blog post. How's that sound? <laughs> All right, so template, I'm gonna put that out of the way. I'm gonna come in and fold and burnish on those two score lines. And this is gonna be how the card goes together. So you're gonna have sort of this diagonal fold, but the recipient is gonna be able to open it this way and then this way to get to the inside. So kind of love that. So we've got our two diagonal pieces. So this one's gonna fit here. And then this one is going to fit here. And by fixing that angle, it now is gonna fit perfectly in this panel. So just gonna use liquid glue. want to drop that because that's what I do. <laughs> Liquid glue is great here because you can slide things right into place. All right, and if you have any raised edges from the paper trimmer, just come in with your bone folder. Got a little bit of extra glue oozing out there. And this card naturally will not want to keep the flaps down, so I just come in and do some extra burnishing on those folds. Then we've got a piece of basic white. This measures four inches by five and a quarter inches. I'm going to adhere that to the inside here. This one is a real easy card because the focus is on the fancy fold part of it. We're just going to do a little bit of stamping here. But I first need to clean my bow tie. We're going to switch from Knight of Navy ink to basic gray using my Simply Chamois here. And the sentiment, a happy birthday to you. So we're going to start with that. I've, I've closed my flaps here because I want to stamp this right in this section here, between the, in the diamond or triangular section. There we go, happy birthday to you. And then, getting all the little paper fuzzies off my basic white. We'll do another bow tie, this time in basic gray. cut this one. Oops. You guys know this well if you've ever used the magnetic cutting plate. Again, this is an old big shot tool, but I just happened to still have it in my stash and was just using it the other day, so Look at that cute bow tie in the basic gray. I love that. Keep running. 
running out of dimensionals here. I like to do the two big dimensionals and then one mini in the knot, just because this will likely be mailed. And then we'll pop this bow tie just for a little bit of interest on the front of this card, right there. Quick and simple, easy, clean, masculine. A happy birthday to you. Fun, fancy fold there. So that's card number two, <laughs> almost said three. And then let's move on to card number three. And did I already say that was card number two? We're, we're doing card number three, and then we'll do prize patrol. So this card is inspired by happy mail that I received just today from Ange Link. Thank you. Look at this. Look at how beautiful that card is. She's using that awesome uh, art expressions in ink designer series paper. I'm not sure who makes this die, but it is beautiful. And she's added ribbon and the sweet little embellishment and it's a folding card. So that's what we're gonna make today, but using the well-suited suite. So we're gonna just start with a piece of Knight of Navy that measures four and a quarter inches by 11. I'm gonna score this first at five and a half, so that's right in the middle. And then I'm gonna flip it and score it at six and three quarters. And that's just because we're gonna fold one one direction and the other the other direction. So on the 11 inch side, five and a half, flip it six and three quarters. So you've got this one and one and a quarter section here, okay? And then I'm going to fold again. This is a valley score line. I'm going to turn that into a mountain and burnish. This is a mountain score line. I'm going to turn into a valley because this is how that card's going to open. Okay. Now I'm just going to bring in liquid glue and we're going to put liquid glue right here on the back side of that one and a quarter inch section. We're going to glue this down. I don't know what this fancy fold is called. It's not a new fancy fold. I don't know if it's called a hinge fold or I don't know what it's called, but we're just going to glue that section down. You can come in and burnish if you like. That's the basics of this fancy fold. Now the other part that I love about this fancy fold is how we can conserve designer series paper. So I've got a piece of this really cool plaid pattern. It's four inches by six inches. So that means you can get six of these out of a sheet of 12 by 12. And I'm just gonna cut along the six inch side two one inch strips off. So I'm gonna end up with a four by four and two one by fours. This four by four is gonna fit right on the front. The first one by four is gonna go here on our little hinge panel. And then this one, I've got a four by four piece of basic white, and that one's gonna go on the inside. Bunch of people asking about book fold. Oh, book fold. I think that might be what it's called. Cause it does remind me of when they had like the, like the Chicago screws and this was the way the books, I think you're right. I never knew what it was called. So thank you. Um, all right, so let me take liquid glue. This is a great project if you did paper shares because you can get um, you can get these pieces out of those paper shares. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. I am with this because it's a little bit directional or you know there's the pattern kind of goes in a certain direction. I'm just making sure that this panel is the same direction as that little side panel. Before we take care of the inside, I'm gonna do quick stamping here. And the sentiment to one of the world's greatest dads. Okay. 
This one's got pretty thin lines on it, so I'm hoping I can get this to stamp right. Yes, all right. I'm gonna take liquid glue. Screws. Chicago screws. Um, actually, I have one right here. It's like those book binding screws that you probably never knew that they were called Chicago screws, but it's like a screw on one side and then depending on how long of that middle section, I don't even know what it's called, but that's like a book binding screw. I use these for my little swatch, cardstock swatches for my team members. Never knew that's what they were called. It was like, well, how do I search for this? A book screw, and then I learned that they're called Chicago screws. You can also use them for belts. You can use them on belts, my husband says. Yep, because we ordered them from the buckle guy. <laughs> my husband does leather work, so. All right, so we'll put this on the inside. So this project will post on either Monday or Tuesday. If you want to get my blog updates pushed to your email, you can subscribe just to get the blog post via email at thepaperpixie.com slash subscribe. Then I've got a piece of basic white. This is four inches by one and a quarter. And I'm going to stamp again, have a happy Father's Day, but I'm going to um, mask again, handsome, because then that makes this card you can send to any father in your life. Make sure you take off that tape. I'm going to make a mess. I know it. I'm going to attempt to get this in the center. It's when you hold your breath and hope you get it right. Yay! All right, so we're going to liquid glue. And then I wanted to center that between those little lines on the paper. We're gonna do quick die cutting and then I wanna show you how I'm gonna poke or punch holes in the side here. I've created a little template, but I'll explain how I did it. Just so if you ever wanted to make multiples of these. So we're gonna do, I'm hoping I can find, oh, there it is. All right, so I'm just gonna grab some Knight of Navy card. What is, what is the tape again? Um, it is post-it tape. I think it's called, it's on my favorites list, the paperpixie.com slash favorites. It's called, I think, post-it correction tape but what I like about it is it's not super sticky so it comes off the stamp really easily um, scotch tape works just as well it's just a shinier surface this is more of a paper surface we've got this tiny little oval that's in the set of dies and I'm gonna cut a bow tie and an oval And this is just going to give our little bow tie some dimension without stamping. All right, liquid glue. Then dimensionals, let's use my scissors and get to some of these good dimensional sections here. Oh, I almost put it on the wrong side. And a little mini for the middle. We're just gonna put that right above the sentiment. Cute little bow tie there. And then what I did 
sides. I just cut a piece of basic white to one by four and I just drew a line down the center at half of an inch and then I came in a half inch from either side just to do the little hole punches there. So I've got this little hole punch sort of template. You could, pen you could eyeball this and measure it as well without having a template, but then I'll just take a pencil. I could just hold the template here too, but we'll go ahead and put pencil right there on the side. And then I'm just gonna come in with the hole punch. This is just an eighth of an inch circle punch. It's retired from Stampin' Up, but you can find these anywhere. You probably already have one in your stash. So I've got my holes punched there. And then we've got the well-suited baker's twine. They do occasionally, Carla, I've seen some tricks where you can just grab some junk mail to try to prevent, you know, put the junk mail kind of between your paper or underneath your paper so you don't get those lines, but yes, it does happen. So I'm just grabbing both the Knight of Navy and the basic gray. Even the snail mail twine would be really cute with this as well. I'm just gonna feed that through the left side, or sorry, that would be the right, and then back through the left side, and I know I need to buy myself those floss threaders. I do have my third hand here with my reverse tweezers. So I like to tie right off the roll. And we're just gonna tie a bow here with the two different colors of twine. And you could use a glue dot to hold this. I like to use the reverse tweezers and just do a bow. The twine is nice. It doesn't make it too girly when you tie a bow. Don't you think? <laughs> Brian has to give, well, I ask for Brian's opinion on every project I make, don't I? I was about to say, you have to give me your opinion. I have to ask you for your opinion is more like it. So he approves all of these before they go, we go live. <laughs> I just always need a second set of eyes. All right, so that is Fancy Fold project number three. Now, if you don't want that flopping around, let's do a little burrito roll with a glue dot. Just kind of roll it onto itself like a burrito. So we'll pick that up. We'll shove it underneath the knot and boom. All right, so that's card number three. So real quick, so there were some comments coming in that ever since somebody said a bow, they couldn't see a bow tie. Oh, yeah. It does look a little bit like a girly bow if you yeah. picture it that way. Um, so but when it's the one color, I think it does better. That does better. Oh, this, yes. And I don't even know if the, if the oval is for that, but I'm assuming it is. I don't, I'm not sure what that piece is for, but I made it work. So card number one, our designer series paper pocket card, thanks to Jennifer Hill. This is a fun diagonal fancy fold card, kind of a unique cut on that one, but quick and easy and kind of cool for the recipient to open. And then thanks to Ange Link for the inspiration for the book fold card. So, all right, I'm nervous because I'm going to try this new um, prize patrol thing, but let's do, let's announce last week's winners first. Let me get my mouse ready here. So, do do do. All right, I'm putting this up for, for last week's winners. I'm probably going to put it up again. So, for last week, congratulations to Rose Ruddy. And to claim your prize patrol, just go to thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol. You won the elegant faceted gems and the gray granite shimmer ribbon. And my team member, Kathy Shockley, you are winner number two. So go ahead and claim your prize patrol. You've got a week to claim it. Now, here are the instructions. They're a little bit simpler because it doesn't matter where you leave the comments. You want to leave the comment, hashtag prize patrol, Please, U.S. residents only. I just ship within the U.S. I'm sorry about that. So go ahead and start putting Prize Patrol in the comments. And I'm going to wait until I'm seeing we've got 108 entries so far, which is awesome. <laughs> I will share my screen in a moment, but I'm just going to look. So hashtag Prize Patrol. Let's see. <laughs> this is going to be exciting. So here's what we're... what. You will win. I forgot to tell you that. You don't even know what you're winning and you're playing, right? 
We are gonna do two winners for the handsomely suited stamp set. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a couple more minutes. While I do that, I, um, let's see, just gonna recap the starter kit special goes through Monday at 11.59 p.m. Uh, mountain time. That is $155 in product of your choice for only 99. It also ships for free, so that's an additional 10% discount. And with that starter kit, there are no obligations, no requirement to sell, but you get to take advantage of all the perks of being a demonstrator. Are the comments still rolling on in? <laughs> well, when they start to slow down, we'll draw the winners. How's that sound? So, if you have multiple entries, the first one's wrong. It'll good. count your second yeah. one. Yeah, you'll be good. Um, let's see. Okay, so that is the starter kit, the paperpixie.com slash join. If you want to take advantage of that, I'd love to have you join my team of paper pixies. There is also the um, connect, craft, and collect promotion. That's the extra $25 in stamping rewards for orders of $250 or more. The last chance products promotion from the mini catalog starts on Tuesday, June 1st. So stay tuned for that. Let's see. I think it's still coming in, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's 300 people, so. I know. We're up to, oh yeah, the entries are going up. This is fun. All right, I'm going to give you two more minutes and then we'll, um, let's see. Do we tap it just once? I'm going to tap it twice. We're going to pick two. No, and... Do we type it in? Oh, once? you just type it in once. Hashtag prize patrol. No spaces. Make sure you spell it right. I love it. This is going to be new. We're going to see how it goes. But if you put it in twice, you don't get it. If you put it in twice, you just get credit for one. Yep. Because it does look at unique participants. Oh, I love it. Thanks for joining, Karen. Um, I hope you guys all have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend if you celebrate Memorial Day in the U.S. I hope there's either ice cream or something on the grill in your future this long weekend. All right, I think we're doing this. This is the first time I'm doing it too, Irene. <laughs> oh, or Tisha said that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Let's see how this goes. This will be fun to watch. Um, <laughs> I'm crossing fingers. Do you see? Hashtag prize patrol. All right, I'm gonna take, let's just do this so we can see it. All right, you guys ready? I'm gonna draw our first winner. We've got 199 entries. This is so fun. <laughs> oh, God. oh, it's gonna slow down. When you see the confetti. Oh, Patty H, congratulations. All right, so Patty H, you're our first winner. Hold on, let me get my post-it notes. And I'm gonna make sure I think I put on there. Yep, so you'll want to go to, um, I didn't put, hold on, Patty H. <laughs> uh, let's do, this is how you claim, okay? All right, so Patty H. All right, that's winner number one. Congratulations, Patty. Let's go back. We're going to draw another winner. Draw again. Here we go. I love this. This is fun. <laughs> Do, do, do. Faye, congratulations. I know Faye. Yay. All right. So look at that awesome confetti. I love it. All right. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I spell it right, Faye. You guys, how fun was that? I think we need to keep doing it that way. So cool. Thank you all for joining me live let's come back to let's remove that i'll switch back to me i think you know where to claim so patty and faye congratulations you can claim your prize patrol at the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol thank you for joining and participating live i hope you all have a wonderful and blessed memorial day weekend i'm gonna put my feet up and enjoy some time off from the day job and I'm excited to, um, I don't know, I'm just excited for, I, we have no plans. It's just going to be uh, interesting to have peace and quiet. <laughs> the kids could not be more excited to see their friends again. So anyways, thank you all so much. 
Take good care. I will be live again next Wednesday for episode 196. I think we might do Prize Patrol the same way because this is fun. I appreciate you joining me live. Have a wonderful and blessed week and I'll see you next Wednesday. Take care. Bye.